In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the basics of Adonis routing. So in the last lesson, we covered that we have a start directory with a routes.ts file in it, which contains all of the routes for our application. And whenever we create a new application, we're given a starter base route for our welcome page. To dive right in, if we take a look at our route property and take a look at the autocomplete options, we can see that we have several different properties and methods that we can call. If you'll notice here, we have one for each of our HTTP methods that we would want to handle. So we have post, put, patch, get, and delete. So whenever we want to handle a get request, we could call route.get. If we want to handle a post, we could do route.post, route.put, route.patch, route.delete. And so what having those different methods does for us is it allows us to handle each of those different contexts differently, depending on whether or not we're trying to get something, post some data, update some data, or delete some data. And so now the first question you might have is, if I have the ability to call route.get to handle get requests, why is the default welcome page calling something called on? And that's a great question. So the on method is actually a shorthand syntax for whenever you have no business logic to handle within the back end. And by business logic, I mean fetching data, updating data, getting data, deleting data, etc., sending emails, you know, things of that nature. So if all you need to do is simply render something out for a page, this on method is a great option because it allows you to simply do that. You could just call route.on, pass in the path that you want to handle this route for, and then pass in the string that you want to render for that view. For the get post, put, patch, and delete methods, the routes are going to look a little bit different. So let's take a look at a get request here real quick. So the first argument is going to be the exact same. It's going to be a pattern for the route that we want to capture. So for example, we could do slash users. So in this case, if we do a get request for slash users, this route's going to get captured. And then unlike the on method, the get post, put, patch, and delete all accept a second argument, which is a callback route handler. So this is going to be an async function, and it's going to be passed in a parameter of our route context. And this is going to be of type HTTP context contract. And we can import that from import HTTP context contract from at IOC Adonis core HTTP context. And it's within this route handler that we can call off all of the different business logic that we might need to do for this route. Ideally, not within the route itself, but dispatching information off to services, events, and things of that nature. So we have our route.get for our users here. Let's say we also want to have a route for posting users. So post users a route for updating users. So we could do put and a route for deleting users. So we could do delete. And it's having these different methods the get, post, put, patch, and delete that allows us to handle requests differently depending on what we're trying to do with that request. So you can see here we have the same route for each of these different methods. And this is perfectly valid because if we do a get request, the get is going to fire off. If we do a post request, the post will fire off, put, put will fire off, and delete, delete will fire off. And this matches one-to-one -one with your typical REST client. So if we take a look at Insomnia here, which is a REST client here, we can see that we have the ability to perform get, post, put, patch, delete, options, head. We have the ability to define all of these within our Adonis routes. So that's why we have those route methods there for us. Now, ideally for these, they're not all going to be just get users, post users, put users, delete users. You're going to need some IDs in there somewhere, right? So that's where route parameters and dynamic routing comes into play. So the way that we can go about that, and we'll show an example here on our delete route, is by doing slash colon and then our param name. So in this case, we would probably want to do an ID. So what that means is if we do a delete request for slash users slash some ominous ID, this route's going to handle that request and it's going to provide us within our context a parameter of ID. And we can actually copy and paste the get request here to say maybe we want to show details for a particular user. So we could do users.id here, head into our terminal, start up our server. So we can run npm run dev, open our server up. We can head over to our users path. And you can see we get a blank page here, and that's because we're not handling that request at all, right? So let's go ahead and define the handlers for two of our get requests. So so the way that we can access this render method within our get requests is by doing return ctx to access our context. We have a property here called view, so we can do view, and it's within view that we have that render function available to us. And then within here, we just want to pass in our template string name. So let's say we want to do a path called users. We can go ahead and save that, and we can go ahead and, and let's just duplicate our welcome page really quick. So we'll just copy and paste that into views, and we will rename it as users. And then we'll just scroll down and we'll replace the heading from it works to users. Give that a save and we can head back into our browser, refresh, and we should see users. 
So that seems to be working good. We're gonna have that same problem with our other get request that is trying to access a single user. So let's head back to our routes. And for this one, let's say maybe we wanna return back a JSON response, right? So for this one, we can do return CTX response to access our response object. And then within here, we have the ability to return a JSON response and we can define the body within here. So let's say maybe we want to define a key of user ID. We can access our route params via ctx.params.id. So it's params dot whatever your route parameter name is. So in this case, ID. So the key name is going to be ID. Let's give that a save. Let's head back into our browser. Refresh, we can verify that the slash users is rendering for the user's route. And we could pass in our slash ASDF. And we can see we get our user ID of ASDF. And this is just Firefox's pretty print for JSON. This is nothing I did here. So if you're using Chrome, you might get something a little bit different looking. That's nothing to worry about. And so now the post, put, delete, and patch methods are really gonna come into play once we start working with a database and persisting some data. So we'll start working with those a little bit later on, but it's good to know early on that they do exist and you can access and use them. Now, alternatively here for all of our routes, instead of referencing context itself as an object, we can destructure this and access the properties that we need within our route handler individually. So for example, for our get users path here, we can do, we can extract out just the view and then we can get rid of that ctx.view and just have view.render. That's a lot more easier on the eyes, I think. So we could do that throughout. So ctx destructure out our response. And then we're also going to need params for this one. And we can get rid of ctx for both of these. And then if we were to have any data for the post, put, and delete, we would be able to do that as well. So now another thing available to us through routes is something called grouping. And grouping allows us to take routes that have identical starting paths and just create a group of them so that we don't have to reference that path over and over again for each route. So in this case, you can see each of these user paths start with users. So what we could do is we can create a group of these. So let's take all of these, let's copy them out, and let's do route dot group and this takes a callback function of the routes that we want to define so we can paste those in for each of these we can get rid of the users so our slash users just becomes slash our slash users slash colon id just becomes a slash colon id and then the rest of these just become slash users and the same thing with our delete just slash colon id and then on our route group we can define that we want the prefix for our route for this group to be slash users so we could do dot prefix slash users. Give that a save. We can verify that that works as well. So give our page a refresh. Works there just fine. Give our page a refresh here. We can see we get users just fine here as well. So now every now and again, you're going to have the need to have a route parameter be optional. And so the way that we go about this is we just question whether or not that route parameter is going to be there. That's the way I remember it. So just add a question mark to the end of your route parameter, and that's going to make it optional. So we can go ahead and give that a save. And now one thing to note here is that our slash colon ID question mark here, it now can just become slash matching exactly with the route that we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out real quick, just so we can demonstrate what an optional route looks like. And there's also a lesson to be had here as well. So let's go ahead and refresh our page and you can see we get back that JSON response, which we would expect. And since our ID route parameter is optional, we don't have any data to correspond within our JSON response. So it's just empty. And now the lesson to be had here is that the order of our routes does matter. So the reason I needed to comment this route out is because if we did not comment it out, it would get precedence because it is defined first. So just remember routes go top down. The first route to match the request is the one that's going to get hit. So in this tree, if we just do a search for slash users, this route right here comes first. So it's the one that's going to capture that route. So remember we have this commented out. If I give that a save and we head back into our browser and we refresh the page, changing nothing within the URL, we're going to get back that page response instead of the JSON response. So just keep that in mind going forward because that might trip you up later on if you forget about it. A couple of other things to note here real quick before we end this lesson is that we have the ability to define middleware for our routes. We can do this on a group basis or we could do this on an individual route. The syntax for this looks the exact same for both. So for this first get request here, if we wanted to add in a middleware, which currently we don't have any, we'll cover middleware later on. We could do dot middleware and define the middleware name that we want to run. Again, we don't have any middleware right now, so we're just going to not have this and not test it. Just I want to make note that it's there. Another important thing to note here is that you can name your routes, and this is going to be really important as your routes file continues to grow 
and you start to reference your routes from within your templates and your views and things of that nature because if you name them, you can just reference the name and not need to worry about the URL changing. However, if you don't name them and you don't use the name to generate out your route, you're gonna to need to update all of the URL references within your application. So the way that we can allow naming our routes is by doing dot as, and then just give it a name. So this is gonna be users.index, for example. So this is gonna be the homepage for the users. If we get rid of the question mark here, we could do the same thing for this route, dot as, users.show to show a single user, dot as, users.store, as, users.update, and then users.delete. And you can name these however you want. These could be Campbell case, these could be snake cased, however you want. The dot syntax is just kind of something I've always done. So don't feel the need to stick with that if that's not your jam. In addition to being able to use groups to prefix a route path to a number of different routes, we can also do the same with the naming convention. So just as we're appending the as method to name each of our individual routes, we could do that for the group as a whole as well. So within our group, we can do as and give it the name prefix that we want all of the subroutes to have. So in this case, it would be users dot. And then within all of the subroutes, we can get rid of that string match. So we can get rid of users dot from all of these. And that just helps us simplify things a little bit further. Okay, so that's as far as we're gonna go in this lesson whenever it comes to routing. In the next lesson, we'll be reaching a little bit further with routing by adding controllers into the mix and learning about controllers and how to use them. So routes and controllers kind of bind one and one together. So, so if you're sitting here thinking, wow, if I need to define all of my routes and handle all my routes in the routes.ts folder, this is gonna get very hectic very quick. Don't worry. We're gonna push all of our route handling into what are called controllers and all of the route handling will happen there. And this routes file is going to get cleaned up a lot and all of our routes will basically just become single lines. So don't worry about the cleanliness of it right now. It's gonna get cleaned up a lot in the next lesson.